Formulas in Notion are not the same as those in Google Sheets or Excel, so let's apply the Pareto Principle to learn them. In this video, I'm going to show you the 20% of the formulas that will give you the 80% of the results in Notion. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Daniel, founder of the Notion Academy. And in this channel, we use Notion and other strategies to free up our time and take control of our lives. So let's get into it. So Notion formulas, all these formulas are always, of course, stored in databases. So let's create this first database. So first of all, let's take a look at the math operators. These are very easy, so I'm going to go very fast with them. So let's say that we have these two numbers. So the way, the way to sum them or subtract them, multiply, divide is very simple. Just number one plus number two. And this is done the same with minus, the same with divided by, the same with multiplying. So this is very easy. Now, another operator that we can be used is to know if these two numbers are equal. So for this, we have to use, instead of just one equal, we have to use two equals. So now if the prop number one is equal number two, this is going to give me a checkbox. So now this is not the same, so this checkbox is not checked, but we also have the not equal. So this is the exclamation mark and the equal. So now this check is going to be ticked because they are not equal. We can also use the greater than. So this, if number one is greater than number two, this is going to give me a check mark. And this is not the case. If we change this to three, then this is checked. And the same with smaller than. If we also want to include that is smaller than and equal to that, so smaller or equal to property number two, right now this is bigger, now this is smaller, but this can also be equal. So now the most useful formula, the if statement. Here we have a task and we have a property of status and there is no started, in progress and completed. But uh, we have here three statuses and I want to count how many of my tasks are already completed. So we need a new property that is going to tell me if this task is completed or not. So for this, we are going to be using this if formula. And this starts like this. If then we open the parenthesis, if the status equals the same equal that we just used before, completed. And since completed is a string of text, we need to open quotes, completed, close quotes, and then comma whatever we write here is what this formula is going to return if this statement is true so we want that if this the status is completed that this returns me a checkbox because this i can count so i'm just going to write true and another comma and now what i read here is what this formula is going to return if the first statement is false so if this is false so if the status is not completed I want this to return false, which is the checkbox, but is not checked. And close the parenthesis. So now whenever this is completed, this is going to be checked. And whenever this is any other, this is going to be not checked. And this is going to allow me to here calculate the checked. So here I can count before I couldn't do it. Okay, so what if we have more than one condition in this if? So let's take this example. In this example, we have a set of days with the efficiency of our habits. So we want a formula that brings us back a green emoji whenever the efficiency is from 80 to 100. A yellow emoji if it's between 50 and 80 and a red emoji if it's lower than 50. So you can see that this is three different scenarios, right? So for this, we will need to nest 
different ifs. So for this to happen, we are going to start as before. If the efficiency is greater than 80, then I'm going to return the green emoji. And if not, I'm going to start a new if. If the efficiency is smaller than 50, then I'm going to return a red emoji. And else, this is the second part of this if, so else, if it's not greater than 80 and if it's not smaller than 50, this means that it's in between. So I'm going to return the yellow emoji. Close. Oh, this needs to be 0, 0.0. So as we can see here, this is returning the color depending on the efficiency. So the next formula that we are going to cover is one that is going to help us know whether a task is overdue or not. And for this, we are going to be using the date between formula. Okay, so for knowing which one is overdue, we are going to be using the if formula. If date between the due date and the current time, and for the current time, there is also another formula which is called now, open and close bracket. And then we select the units that we want to use to compare both dates. So in this case, I want to use days to compare. Days is smaller than zero. So this means that the due date is smaller than now. And this means the task is overdue. Then true is going to return true. If not, false. So as we can see right now is December 26. And just these two has been checked as overdues. Okay, so now I have this database in which I have added also the status property that we had before. So what if I want to easily see all the tasks that are overdue? So this means that this check is blue and that I have not completed. So for this, I'm also going to be using another formula. And in this formula, I am going to use the if statement and since we have two conditions to be true, which is this formula is checked and the status is not started, we are going to be using the AND operator. And this is as easy as writing AND, opening the bracket, formula equals true, and then comma, this is the second part of the AND, AND status equals not started. And we close the parentheses. So all this is the AND statement. So if these two are true, then I am going to return true. If not, I'm going to return false. So as you can see here, I can just see all the tasks that are overdue and that are not started. If I change this to completed, this disappears, as it should, right? Because I don't care about an overdue task that is already completed. I just care about the ones that I have not yet completed. Of course, if we have the AND operator, we will also have the OR operator. So this will mean that we just need either one to be true or the other to be true. So this full statement can return true. So in this case, whenever the formula is true, so whenever this is checked, this is going to return checked. But also whenever this property status is not started, this is going to return checked. And as we can see here, this is the only situation in which this is not checked because this is not checked and this is completed and we wanted it to be not started. Okay, so now what if we want to see how many days our task is overdue and we want a sentence to tell us in normal language? So for this again, we are going to create a new formula, days overdue. And to simplify this, let's break this formula down into different columns and then we are going to join them all together. So let me write another one just for the number of days that they are apart. And in here, we are going to use the date between formula and it's between the due date and now in days. This is the same as we have written before. So here we can see that this is minus three, minus five. And these are the two that are overdues. 
but what I want is the positive number because I want to say three days overdue, no, minus three days overdue. So for this, I am going to change this order and I'm going to put now first and then the property delete. So now that we have these three and five, let's go back here. Let's copy this formula, which is going to tell us the number of days and let's come here. So here we just want to return some text whenever the date is overdue. So we can use this formula over here, which tells us the overdues. So if this formula over here is true, then I want to return the number of days that this is overdue. So this is gonna be the first step. If not, nothing just this a blank space. But as you can see, I cannot do it because it's telling me that this is not a number. So this is the perfect occasion to introduce a new formula, which is called to number. What this formula does is changes the text into a number. So you can see here the 42 is changed to 42. So I'm going to do that with this space and that's it. So now this is just returning the days that the tasks are due and not returning anything when they are not overdue. So I'm just going to come back here and write this sentence. So now I want this number to be translated into text. So for this, I'm going to come here and write a formula that is going to allow me to do this. And this formula is called format. I'm going to open the bracket here and close the bracket here. So this is now text. And since this part is now text, I'm going to remove this to number so it also can be text. So now the result is the same, but the difference is these numbers are now text. So how can I make this new sentence here? Because remember, all of this is just the number of the days overdue. Here I can sum a new string of text and I can say days overdue and I'm going to write here a space and I'm done. So here I have the full sentence, but you have seen that I have needed to change the number to text. Okay. So these are all the formulas that I use every time in Notion. And with these formulas, you can feel totally confident that you will get 80% of what Notion formulas can give to you. And if you like this Pareto way of thinking when it comes to Notion features, you can check this video over here in which I explain following the 80-20 rule, the backlinks in Notion, where you can find four useful ways to use them. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you crash it with the formulas and hasta la próxima.